All right, YouTube, the same people that are uh, pretending that we should constantly insult and berate the Russians over Crimea or cyber intrusion or something are now uh, flipping that argument on its head in regards to China and saying, oh, no, we can't piss the Chinese off. Oh, no, 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 we can't. We, uh, we have to be very gentle and kind to the Chinese over this Taiwan thing. You see, the problem is this. A lot of people don't even know this. China and Taiwan both claim that their governments are the legitimate government of the other. That is, the Chinese government claims Taiwan is just a, a rebelling province that is actually theirs, and they don't recognize the sovereignty of Taiwan. Taiwan claims that its own government is the legitimate governing body in exile of all of China, and in this situation, neither, of course, is capable of doing much about the other. The United States policy has been, we'll, be, we'll defend Taiwan. Now, Trump is correct to ask why the same people who are telling him he shouldn't accept a congratulatory call from Taiwan because it might offend the Chinese as though anybody fucking cares if they get offended over something that simplistic. We talk to everybody else. We talk to tin horn regimes all the time. Why not talk to this developed nation that's actually our friend in the region? It doesn't make any sense. They're acting as though that's some great coup. Oh, Trump doesn't know anything about diplomacy. He might piss off the Chinese, again, as though we have to fear China. They're incapable of projective force. Let them, uh, let them dickwag a little bit. It'll do them some good, I guess. But at the same time, these people ignore the fact that we sell billions in weapons to Taiwan. Now, we're, we're in an alliance with Taiwan. They are our ally. Why should we not talk to them? We're just going to freeze them out and say, oh, yeah, uh, because of China and the fact that they sell us cheap plastic crap that people uh, hoard in boxes constantly and that breaks 10 days after you buy it, uh, and because we spend billions of dollars doing so for some inane reason instead of just getting it from India where it's cheaper anyway, uh, oh, oh, we can't offend them, this export muscle that we ourselves keep injecting with cash that's looking a little bit malaise-stricken anyway. We keep injecting China with our own money. China's now injecting itself, too. They're a double addict right now. If it weren't for the fact that they were constantly pumping their own economy, they'd already have flatlined. It'd be just like the famine uh, of China back in, I think, the, the late 19th century when people were eating each other for a brief period uh, because of social order collapsing. Uh, what's happening here <clears throat> is that China has extended its reach and claims part of India, part of Pakistan, the nation of Taiwan, uh, a large swath of international waters bordering half a dozen other states, including, oddly, the, the North Koreans in some areas, um, and, is and is constantly uh, aggressive towards these nations. They've even pissed off the Vietnamese. The Vietnamese, they used to be like communist mode and were a friend to China, more or less, we actually, the United States disliked Vietnamese policy so much that when Pol Pot was in power, we actually were hoping that he would win against the Vietnamese when they were locked in battle. That's how bad we thought they really were. Of course, it was a myth. There was never any actual problem there, and they've sort of fallen away. They're in a sort of mixed economy now, too. You, technically, they're still communist, but it's kind of like China in that it's not really communism at this point. It's, it's state capitalism meshed with some private endeavors, and it's, uh, it's, it's difficult to even classify what their economy is. So you're telling me that we should stop talking to Russia because of Crimea, but we should continue pussyfooting around China despite the Spratly Islands, the whole South China Sea, Taiwan, the... the parts of the Kashmiri province. We should ignore all that Burma, the Burmese border, the Vietnamese border, uh, their constant attacks on Vietnamese and Filipino fishing vessels. We should ignore that because, you know, China great, China strong or something. But we should constantly perturb the Russians over an area that largely was pro-Russian to begin with, it seems. Now, I will say, I'm worried about Russia's actions in Ukraine, too. I happen to support the Ukrainian people on that. But which which one of these is more warmongering, more overextending, more imperialistic perhaps? The Chinese are currently colonizing parts of East Africa and fighting with their neighbors on a regular basis. Or Russia a couple years ago invaded one peninsula 
which, which again, held people who largely supported the idea of them annexing the peninsula anyway. I'm going to say that the former is probably a little bit more aggressive on the world stage, probably a little bit more destabilizing, and the neighbors are hammering or using a nail gun or some shit, so I'm probably hearing some booming in the background. A lot of construction here lately, by the way. Uh, but I'll say, I, why can't we have normal diplomacy with Taiwan? Ooh, the, the Chinese might get pissed off. Us. Who cares? <laughs> Who fucking cares if the Chinese get pissed off? What are they going to do, invade Taiwan? It'd be hilarious to see them try. They'd end up getting clusterfucked by the United States, all of NATO, most of the rest of Asia would take the opportunity. What do you think India and Pakistan would do if the Chinese were locked in battle somewhere else, expending tens of millions of people's lives? Oh, they'd be more than happy to secure their claim on pieces of Chinese land that they claim are theirs. What about the Tibetans? You think they might rise up and say, oh, finally, we're going to be independent because they're not going to have the ability to stop us. Yeah, I think that's probably what you'd have. And I think there are some also uh, Western chunks of land that certain Islamic tribal groups really want to be autonomous and the Chinese keep like purging them and stuff. Um, China would end up fracturing if they actually tried. They do not have projective force. The, the reason why they're building these sea bases around the Spratleys in the first place is because they don't have the money to invest right now in a modern navy. If you can't build carriers, you make fake carriers that don't move anywhere. It's as simple as that. You dredge up the sediment, pile it right on shore, and make a nice little flat level island, put some cement around it to keep it together, and you build your air base there. It's as simple as that. It's just about being able to project in the general East and Southeast Asian region. That's why they're fortifying these places. China says to us, do not bring the U.S. Navy too close to these islands or sail it in the South China Sea because this is our water now. Now we've claimed this. It's no longer international water. You're telling me that that's not a provocation? Why should we be concerned over them being a little uncomfortable with us talking to Taiwan? Can we please put things into perspective here? Us having a diplomatic relationship with a nation that we sell billions of weapons to anyway is not a provocation. If the Chinese want to take it as a provocation, so be it. They're going to do exactly nothing about it. But when China openly threatens us and says, oh, there might be an incident if you sail in these waters that are international waters anyway, th that's a provocation. Now, of course, the Navy goes there. and They're not going to do anything about that either. They're not actually crazy enough to fire on a U.S. naval vessel. And they didn't. We sailed them around these islands and there was no problem. Their ships flanked us for a while and everyone sort of lost interest in what was happening. But they're constantly... Uh, they're, they're ram, they use their ships to ram Vietnamese vessels and all sorts of stuff. They claim that those uh, mineral-rich deposits off the shore on, uh, near Japan, are they belong to China too. It's like, oh yeah, nobody else gets anything. If the United States were to pull something similar, if we were to, for instance, say, well, the entire Caribbean is now ours. There is no territorial water of Cuba, Haiti, the Dominican Republic, Venezuela doesn't have any. This, this whole maritime regions ours and and all of this water off the coast of you know british columbia that's ours too like the north pacific area and uh you know we're extending our waters out beyond guam and hawaii and puerto rico it's basically all ours we're vastly expanding our maritime borders if we were to do that a lot of people in the world including a lot of our allies would get a little uncomfortable they'd say well why are you doing this This is imperialism it's it's not acceptable you should know better but china does it and that's okay and we have to pussyfoot around them over the taiwanese issue now i support the nation of taiwan yeah shanghai shack and and some of the things that went on there may be aside yes the taiwanese government technically speaking at least under the understanding of the western world is the legitimate governing body of all of china not the communist party but then china disagrees they think that their communist party is the legitimate governing body behind taiwan as well as slices of india pakistan vietnam and many of these other states therein lies the problem but you have to keep playing the game when you have these sort of insolvable stalemates you just have to hold your ground that's all you have to do we have to make it clear to china yeah we're going to talk to taiwan if we want 
What are you going to do about it? Oh, go ahead and fight a trade war. See what happens. We get a president now that doesn't care and will slap embargoes on you, and we'll just get our goods from India. We don't care. Take a couple of years uh, to uh, get industry going there. They'll probably leave bricks. They'll be getting a lot more money from us than they ever got from you. What are you going to do about it? We'll, have, we'll just gobble up India. We'll be friends with them, and then we'll use our own diplomatic leverage over them and over Pakistan to finally solve their border crisis. They'll team up and they'll curb stomp the Chinese. That's what we should be doing. Yeah, we should provoke the Chinese a little bit. It's not like they can end the world with their nuclear stockpile. Meanwhile, these same idiots want us to perturb Russia that can. I'd say that's kind of crazy, in my estimation. What the people of Taiwan ever do to us that we can't talk to them? That, uh, you know, I can go to Taiwan as a tourist. I can go and talk to Taiwanese people. Why can't Trump accept a congratulatory call from, you know, Shanghai Shek 2.0 or something like that? I don't see a problem with this. Who cares what China thinks? Who cares what the communists over there so-called, again, they're under a mixed model now, mixed economy. Who cares if they get offended? So they'll get over it. Yeah, send them a, a chocolate basket or something. They'll forgive you. It's not like they're actually going to wage a trade war anyway because they're not suicidal over their own economy, which is already weak. Trust me, uh, it is. They've pra practically abandoned the Nicaraguan Canal idea when they realized we were just going to double the Panama Canal and it'd be cheaper because we happen to actually be in the Americas as opposed to across the ocean. Um, <laughs> it's very, very funny. Uh, China is not as strong as some people really think that it is. That's about all. Peace out.